On part one of our look at snow avalanches and how to stop them, we took an in-depth look at the factors that lead to the creation of a rooftop avalanche and how to safely deal with them by installing a well-designed snow guard system. In part two, we've got even more common misconceptions to dispel. Are adhesive snow guards just as good as mechanical? Do you have to pay top dollar to get the best system? And what are the things to look for when choosing the best snow guard system for your roof? Let's get back to it. Here's another misconception we hear about. Uh, taller devices are inherently going to be able to hold back snow more. Well, what's your opinion on that? Um, that's another myth, actually, um, Patrick. You know, a lot of people think, well, we get really, really deep snow here. You know, it, our snow here gets, you know, way higher than this device. Sure. So this device, you, you know, we got to build. It's never going to work. got to be taller. We talked about densification of snow. Mm -hmm. So as the snow is, is pushing down the slope, it's densifying toward its lower end. So it densifies by its own weight, okay? Sure. And remember, there's, there's two forces. One is straight down, and the other is this vector force, okay. right? So the vector force pushes the bank of snow and densifies it toward its lower end. And the down force, which is its own weight, densifies it toward the roof surface. So where is the snowbank the most dense? It's toward its lower end and immediately adjacent to the, to the roof surface. So snow guards that are only a few inches in height have proven very, very effective to restrain so, snow masses that may be many feet in depth. Uh, another one we hear sometimes is that if you're using S5 clamps, you've got to go and retighten them every single season. What do you have to say about that? That's absurd. <laughs> <laughs> I had a feeling um, you might say that. In the sequence of tightening a, a two-screw clamp, like the ones that are normally used for most of our snow retention systems, we have a recommended torque because we test at a specific torque Absolutely. on, that, on that, those set screws. What we're doing is we're not only compressing the standing seam here, but we're also pushing a little indentation into that seam. Yeah, putting a dimple in the material. A dimple yeah. is a good way to put it into that seam material, and we're pressing that dimple into the opposite wall in ah. the throat of that clamp. What that does is it creates a mechanical interlock. And that's where we get the incredible holding strength sure. that we get from, from S5 attachments. It's because it's more than a friction connection. When you deform it, now you've interlocked the set screw, the seam folding, and the opposite wall of the clamp, and that creates a mechanical interlock. And that's why we get such incredible holding strength. Let's cover a couple more. Adhesive fastened snow guard systems are just as effective as mechanically connected ones. I think we've talked about this a little bit. What's your thought on that misconception? Well, it's a common one. <laughs> <laughs> You've heard it a time or two. And, and, it's, and it's totally, totally incorrect. If you use that approach, you're really rolling the dice as to whether they're gonna be effective for your project mm -hmm. or not. Yeah. And not only that, but as I said before, adhesives weaken as they age due to exposure of UV, temperature change, yeah. moisture, and ozone. So they weaken as they age. So their holding strength in five years is going to be nowhere near what their holding strength yeah. was when they were installed and perhaps also when they were tested by their manufacturer because that doesn't anticipate the aging process. Sure, yeah, you know, a lot that's, to miss. That's assuming that, it, that, that it's as strong as it is today for the rest of the life of the roof, and that just isn't gonna happen. So one more then, one more. Some people think that better quality engineered snow guards are, are, are good just because they're expensive. Does every single good snow guard have to be expensive? Well, that's, that's a very interesting point, and it is intuitive. We're constantly hearing, you get what you pay for, sure. and if you want the best, you know, you gotta pay more. But in fact, we've compared costs every way from Sunday with other products that are on the market. In almost every case, 
we're actually less expensive. Oftentimes, it's half the cost. Other alternatives that yeah. don't work nearly as well and are pretty unreliable that are not based on science and testing as our systems are. So that's a statement that's usually true, but in, in some cases it's absolutely untrue. We're and the exception to the rule there, I guess. We are, and I like being an exception to the rule, Patrick. <laughs> you know that. I, absolutely. I, I, just, I just sort of challenge every convention I bump into and make <laughs> sure that it's based on fact and science and not on supposition or hearsay. Absolutely. You, I mean, so that's a great segue there. How important is it to install a snow guard system that's been properly tested and engineered? Well, we talked about the engineering that goes in place yep. in order to properly design and, and utilize any snow retention system on any building in any place. Mm -hmm. The only way you can do those calculations is if you know the failure load of the parts yeah. you're installing, right? <laughs> and you can't know the failure load without adequate testing. Mm -hmm. Even our own products will perform differently and fail at different ultimate loads sure. depending upon the gauge of the material, the type of material, the profile of the seam. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's why we've done over 3,000 load tests and so on. Then the next thing is to be sure that you're testing in a certified lab, nationally recognized testing laboratory certification. Not Bubba <laughs> out in the garage who phonied up fun. a load cell and, and, <laughs> and did some crude kind of testing. That, sure. that is not valid testing. The next thing to worry about, or hopefully not worry about, but think about, is the product that was tested the same as the product that's being shipped out the door of the factory? Sure. So now you have to get into manufacturing certifications. And one of the gold standards for that is, is ISO 9001. Oh. That assures that the products you're actually shipping are the same as the products that you've tested. That will also ensure in most cases that you're manufacturing using certified material. And so without those two certifications, the testing and the manufacturing of the product, you really can't reliably apply any engineering to make sure that it all works. So let's kind of sum it up then a little bit. How can a building owner determine what snow guards are right for them? Well, there are a lot of snow guard products that look pretty much the same yep. as, as we know. But the question to ask, given what we've already discussed about the certified testing, the certified material, the certified manufacturing, and certified engineering. And then the next thing is what trail of traceable success have they had with, with their product? How long they've been in business is not necessarily relevant because there are a lot of companies been in business for a hundred years, but they haven't been in the snow guard business. It's for true, yeah. Years. So it's track record along with all those certifications. Absolutely. Customer testimonials find out what people are saying about their sure. products. Sure, yeah, what your peers are thinking of it. The other thing is, is the manufacturer willing to put their money where their mouth is? And I'm alluding now to warranties. Now, there are two types of warranties that are typically out there related to the roofing business. One is a material warranty. That says that there's no defect in the material or the manufacturing of the material. Yeah. And that's a pretty standard warranty. And they're usually for one or two years there are some out there that are longer than that, maybe five years or even 10. Ours is a lifetime warranty. If, if we made a boo-boo when we manufactured our goods, we'll replace those goods for the entire life of the roof. But that's still a material and workmanship warranty. And those kind of warranties are generally handed off with no charge. We also have a performance warranty, which says, that our system will not structurally fail for the life of your roof. And in order to offer that warranty, we do charge for it because we have to 
physically approve your 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 drawings and your system yeah, on the sure. front end of the project, and then we have to send an inspector out who actually gets up on the roof and he has a, a list of, of, of protocols on what to check and how frequently to check yeah. to make sure that the installation is as it should be. And that warranty is uh, for 30 years or the life of the roof, whichever comes first. So anyone who's interested in reading up on this further, do we have any further reference materials that we can point them towards that might kind of illuminate the subject even more? There are documents, two different documents that are published by the MCA. Um, one is called Metal Roof Design for Cold Climates, and the other is called Qualifying Snow Retention Systems, I believe is the title. And uh, you can give our listeners uh, links for those. They're free downloads from MCA. That's the Metal Construction Association, metalconstruction.org. Those are free downloads, and uh, they're, they're good reference documents, and they're industry consensus documents as well. Rob, we really appreciate your expertise on this subject. Thank you so much for joining us and illuminating us a little bit more on this subject. Hey, I enjoyed it as I always do, Patrick. God bless everybody. We'll catch you next time. Thanks everybody. That's gonna do it for a look at snow avalanches, snow guards, and some of the must knows associated with them. When it comes to protecting your property and the people in harm's way, snow guards are a smart investment that could really save you in the long run. Just make sure that you do the research to be certain that the system you've chosen can handle the specific conditions for your area and that the company you're dealing with has a track record that you can trust. Thanks so much for joining us on the Metal Roofing Academy. If you found today's information helpful, please drop us a like and hit subscribe. Your support means a lot to us and really helps our channel. Take care everyone, we'll see you next time.